Welcome back to Rear Gun Adventures. Well, today is the turn of the Smith & Wesson number no. three Schofield. Now this is the CO2 powered 0.177 lead pellet firing variant. They also do this as a 4.5 millimeter BB pistol. And incredibly, they offer this as a six mil airsoft pistol. Um, now it's advertised at 430 feet per second. That's probably a little bit hot for airsoft games, but uh, I'm sure they've found a way around that. So this is from a company called ASG. That's the box. ASG are distributed in the UK by SMK, Sports Marketing. And um, these guns are made by a company called Wing Gun in Taiwan. Now, it's full metal construction. The only plastic on this pistol are the grips. That's uh, simulated wood, and actually it's pretty good. It does look a lot like wood. The action is exactly as it would have been on the original. Six inch rifle barrel, so it makes it quite accurate for lead BBs. The only departure from it being historically correct is the safety just behind the hammer there. So with the safety on, the hammer's locked and you won't move past that first notch, which is considered the safe notch. Um, it's just over a kilo in weight. Um, it does feel quite weighty and there's quite a heft to it. It's got a nice balance. I wouldn't say it was um, overly heavy. It just feels good. It's a top brake which is one of the things I like about this. Now, the ejector for the shells, if you push it all the way down quite quickly, they'll all fly out. If you do it slowly, they'll ease up quite nicely. If you don't want that to happen, there's a small button just in front of the trigger guard. And if you press that down, it disengages the ejector, which is fantastic. <clears throat> the shells themselves are the standard type that you'd have come across before. You just put a pellet in the back, load the shells into the revolver and fire away. Um, I've been playing with this and I've had an empty shell under the hammer which is not required. Um, it's just a silly old habit I've got. Um, so I'm getting five shots <coughs> but you can put six in if you like it makes no difference. The finish is called Aging Black and it's very similar to the battlefield finish that you will see on some of the Webley revolvers. It's actually really nice and gives it a really authentic aged look. Anyway, quick bit of history, if you don't already know. Smith & Wesson launched this in 1868. It was a military sidearm and an American major by the name of George W. Schofield took his and modified it. Smith & Wesson liked what he'd done so much. In 1875, they launched the Schofield, which was really where this took off and this became um, standard issue sidearm throughout the world. In the late 1890s, Smith & Wesson discontinued the Model 3, but that wasn't the end of its story. It was then made under license all over the world and was used by the Russian army, the Spanish, the Italians, the French, and the British army. And in the First World War, this was referred to by the British troops as the Spanish Webley. And actually, if you look, the Webley service revolver probably owes quite a lot to the design of this particular pistol. Anyway, let's have a little shoot. I'll put five into a target, see what I get. It's quite windy out there. Um, I've got the camera on maximum zoom, so it's not going to be fantastic filming, but you'll see what's going on. Okay, I'll be right back.
Well, there you go. So that's five. That's a good group. Uh, the first one was just finding the range. I've tried three different types of pellets. I've tried the uh, gecko, which are the ones that you saw in the film. I've tried the interceptors from BSA and I've tried the um, H&Ns. Um, all pretty good, but the gecko were by far the best. Now, as I say, CO2 powered. One of the nicest things about this, it's really easy to access the CO2. It goes in there. Within that pistol grip is the tool that you use to actually tighten it up and pierce it. So you're not going to lose that, which I think is a very good idea. Because that's one of the issues often with these things. So that's where the CO2 goes. Loading it is a piece of cake. Literally drop the pellet in the back. Rubber O-ring secures it. Drop it in. Once you're loaded, if you've left the ejector engaged, you can disengage it if you push the lever the right way. There you go. Load the gun. Um, excellent little safety. Perfect position. Really, really nice crisp trigger. The whole thing looks and feels excellent. Now, I've said before, I'm not really into replica guns, uh, and I'm not. But um, this is the exception. It's a little bit of history. It takes me back to the days of the Westerns that I grew up watching. Um, lots of famous and lots of infamous characters from the past have favoured these. Jesse James, to name one. Um, Buffalo Bill, to name another. Teddy Roosevelt was rumoured to own one of these. They've certainly had a long and illustrious history up until now. Let's say this is ASG, which is made by Wing Gun. It's a really good quality, really hefty piece of equipment. Certainly worth having one in your collection. If you like realistic imitation firearms, it's a good one to get. Now, a quick word on the law. That's a pellet firing CO2 pistol, or as a BB, and I say BB, I mean still BBs, 0.177. This doesn't suffer from any of the problems that you'll have with an airsoft. If you want the airsoft version, which looks just like this, it's all metal. Um, it's a realistic firearm, as far as the law is concerned, and either you need a good excuse to have one, that would be if you're a member of a historical reenactment group, you regularly play airsoft games and have the right paperwork and number, or they're going to paint it a strange colour. It's going to be blue, orange, something unrealistic. So just bear that in mind. If you aren't someone that plays airsoft games, if you're not a member of a reenactment group and you want an airsoft one, it's going to have to be blue or orange or red. If you want one to fire lead pellets and you want one to fire still BBs, then you can have it in this colour or nickel with imitation ivory grips, which actually does look nice as well. But I do like this aging black. In fact, I really like this aging black. Anyway, that's it for today. It's a really quick review just to um, show you how it shoots, show you how it works and give you a nice close look at what you're getting for your money. Now, money wise, you'll be looking at, I think, about 180 quid off the top of my head. There is a price on the box. Um, so if I'm wrong, I'll add a bit to the end of the video. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Big thank you to all those who have liked and subscribed. I'm going to go and put a plaster on my finger now because I've taken a chunk out of it with a trigger. So uh, don't try that at home. Anyway, that's enough for today. See you again soon. Bye for now.